Today, the topic of our discussion is Gaini Boards and Labor Board. It was basically the request from one of my YouTube channel viewer. That's why I specially made this um, video so that it can be helpful for you in your exam. So let us start this um, station, the Gaini Board and the Labor Board. So basically what happens in TOKS exam, there are two stations which are assigned to Gaini board or labor board. In one exam, a Gaini board comes. In another exam, the labor board comes. So it depends upon your luck whether Gaini board comes or labor board comes. But the overall management is almost the same in the sense that you have to approach the these two type of boards in the same manner. Likewise, uh, you will have to prioritize the patients which are given in the scenarios and you will have to tell the examiner like which team of doctors you are going to assign to specific case and how to manage each and every case. So let us uh, give an example of gynae board which will give you an overall idea of what happens. You go to one station after the bell rings and on the table you find uh, a paper in which the different cases are given usually five or six cases are given on that piece of the paper in one station you just have to read all those cases and make some management plan in your mind um, and when the bell rings the same amount of time will be given to that one station when the bell rings you will go to the next station and examiner will be in the next station means in the first station there will be no examiner and examiner will be, will be in the next station she will ask the different questions from you. So let's come to the example. Your registrar on call and elective operation list was undertaken this morning on your post-operative evening round following patients are seen. Okay, these patients are seen will be, um, I will tell you, one by one, five cases, but uh, also written in that piece of paper will be the staff available. The staff available includes two house officers, second year PG training, the staff nurse. You are, uh, you are working with this group of people. So, case number one is that diagnostic laparoscopy for the secondary infertility was done this morning. Now, the patient complains of nausea. Her BP is, her pulse is 70 beats per minute. BP is 120 by 80 beat, uh, millimeter mercury. Abdomen is soft and non tender with no vaginal bleeding. So you have to quickly assess which type of patients. This laparoscopy is done. And just complaint of nausea is there. Abdomen is soft and tender. Vitals are normal. So that is not very emergency, but complaint of nausea is there. Second case is that a 30-year-old lady had cone biopsy for sin 3 and vaginal pack in C2 and she has got no PV bleeding and she is vitally stable. So she is even uh, more stable than the previous patient because this patient has got no complaint and PV bleeding is normal, vitally stable. Now case number 3, a 60 years old patient woman had a uh, vaginal hysterectomy and anterior repair today. Now her pulse is 120 beats per minute, alarming sign that pulse is more than 100. BP is on our lower side, 100 by 70 and abdomen is soft but when you check the pad, she has soaked about 3 sanitary pads. Although she had vaginal hysterectomy but she has soaked 3 sanitary pads. Case number four, a 52 years old woman had, has uh, undergone DH and BSO plus uh, for endometriosis. She is conscious and her pulse is 96 beats per minute. BP is 130 by 90 millimeter of mercury. Abdomen is soft and urine output is 100 cc from the time of the surgery. That is 5-4. Okay, so one thing should quickly come in your mind that what is the problem with her? Abdomen is soft and tender. She is, um, uh, she is conscious, vitally stable. But the main problem is that of urine output. It should be 30 uh, cc per hour, which is less here because here it is 100 cc for 5 hours. Now come to the case number 5, operative day of um, suction and curatage after induced abortion of a 28 years old para 3 plus 1 complaining of the lower abdominal pain and pain in the left shoulder. And her pulse is 100 beats per minute, BP is 110 by 70 with a mild to moderate abdominal tenderness. So pain in the shoulder and abdominal tenderness, these are a little bit alarming signs.
Now the bell rings while you read these questions and you go to the next uh, station where examiner asks the question. Okay, examiner will say, examiner can ask any question. Uh, first, she can ask about the management or first she can say that how will you prioritize, prioritize each and every case. But if she asks about the management in each case, you should know how to manage each and every case. So the case number one, as we discussed that laparoscopy, diagnostic laparoscopy was done this morning. Patient just had complaint of nausea and and vitals were stable and abdomen soft and, and non-tender. So how to manage? House officer to examine the patient and reassure her for her complaint. As we know that in our team, we have two house officers. So uh, as this complaint is uh, not very alarming, just uh, nausea. So we have to send the house officer that uh, go and see the patient and reassure her for her complaint. If she has got nausea complaint, we ha she has to reassure. Case number two, as we study that it was a 30 years old who had seen three vaginal pack was inside too and she had no PV bleeding, she was vitally stable. So, so this is not very emergency situation. And for that, no need to assign house officer. You can just ask the nurse to monitor the patient as this is stable post-operative patient. Now case number three. 60 years old a woman had um, uh, we said that vagina hysterectomy anterior repair done this morning now she is not vitally stable pulse is more than 100 bp is on her lower side and she has soaked three sanitary pads so we have to say that this is gynecological emergency and consultant needs to come and see the patient and in the presence of registrar and house officer we have to ensure uh, two white bore IV lines arrange two pins of the blood and inform anesthetist and arrange the theater arrange for the exploration and urgently call the consultant to assist in this case. Now, what about the case four? A 52 years old woman has undergone TH plus BSO for endometriosis. She is conscious, vitally stable, but the urine output was low from the time of the surgery. Again, this is not very emergency, but um, in spite of calling for the nurse, a doctor needs to see the patients. The house officer can handle the situation. House officer needs to examine the patient and reassure her for her complaint. And secondly, the house officer needs to monitor input and output as well. And if needed, the fluid challenge. Moreover, the house officer needs to check the operation notes and evidence of blood loss during surgery means the house, officer needs, the house officer needs to assess the patient and inform the registrar. Now, case number five, uh, operative day of suction and curettage after, uh, after um, septic abortion, para three. And we have studied this case that she had uh, left shoulder pain and pain in abdomen and uh, vitally almost stable. Okay, mild to moderate tenderness in abdomen. So how do you manage this case? Um, the thing is that we have to ask the second year training, which uh, is available to us, to um, do ultrasound and assess the patient thoroughly. Okay, because this is not the case which only the house officer can manage. She has to monitor the vital, uh, vitals and may need laparotomy due to suspicion of sepsis and perforation because the complaint is uh, a little bit alarming. Okay, so we have studied all the cases. Uh, we have... Um, we have made management in our mind. The examiner will ask, how will you prioritize each patient? Okay, as far as priority is concerned, we will uh, give priority one to the case number three in which uh, uh, we had to ask the consultant to come and uh, assess the case because a patient might need it, the emergency laparotomy. So we will tell the examiner that this case number three is uh, basically the, the most urgent priority number one. <clears throat> Priority number two needs to be given to case number five in which uh, there was suspicion of the perforation and the patient may need a laparotomy. Okay, case number um, three, case number four had priority number three, okay, because the urine output was low and the case number one had priority four because patient had a little bit complain after diagnostic laparoscopy and priority number five was needed to be given to case number two which was the least urgent staff nurses nurse needed to monitor the patient now let's come to the labor board basically the different scenarios related to the labor room are given and candidates are asked to prioritize the case and assign the case to the team and management manage each case Basically, you can take help from the different talks, books, but uh, in fact, in exam, the actual scenario may vary each and every time. So that was um, 
an overview of what happens in gynae and offspore. Thank you so much for your patience and office.